Hey guys, welcome back. Super excited about this video today. So let's get into it. Now, you've already watched the video where you prune your adult rosemary plant to prevent it from overgrowing in your garden. And you probably watched the video where you take cuttings from the rosemary plant to make more plants. Now, some of you have been having trouble getting those rosemary cuttings to root and you're not alone. You know, rosemary is a woody perennial. It's not always easy to root, but in today's video, I'm gonna show you how simple household items can give those rosemary cuttings a kick in the butt and start those roots for you. Hey guys, I'm here just working on the drain spout for my rain barrels. If this is your first time visiting the channel, first thing, I want to thank you for stopping by. Here at the farm, we talk about how to maximize your backyard veggie production using common and advanced organic methods. If growing tons of fresh organic fruits and veggies out of your backyard garden is something you're passionate about, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. All right, so for this video demonstration and experiment, I'm going to use seven cups. So I've got my seven biodegradable plastic cups here. Now two of these are going to be for a control. Uh, I'm going to be using regular tap water in this. And then I'm going to be using pond water in this. The rest of the cups are going to have a base of pond water plus their active ingredient. I just want to show that there possibly is a difference between the chemicals uh, that we use in our tap water um, and then the pond water, which doesn't have those chemicals. So those are our two controls. I will put them over there for now. This leaves us with five cups. Now number one, we have honey. Now honey comes from beeswax. Beeswax contains a hormone and growth stimulant uh, known as triacontinol. It's actually one dash triacontinol. Now this is a fatty alcohol and it is a known proven chemical compound uh, that is a growth stimulant in almost all plants. So we're gonna see how that fares in our experiment. And that leads me into ingredient number two, uh, which you know from previous videos, which is alfalfa. Now alfalfa also contains uh, that fatty alcohol, triacontinol. So we're gonna see how it fares uh, against the honey. Now I didn't have any alfalfa meal on hand, so I'm simply using rabbit pellets. Rabbit pellets are made out of compressed alfalfa. Same thing. So now we got common ingredient number three, and that is aspirin. So the main ingredient in aspirin, which is acetosilic acid, doesn't actually replace, you know, the acidic hormones in plant roots. In simple terms, what it does is it blocks the receptors uh, from a cut or injured plant. And these receptors produce these hormones um, that spell the plant's death. You know, basically it's a, a self-destructing hormone. And what these guys do, um, like they block the pain receptors uh, in us, is they block those hormones from being produced in plants uh, and allow that plant to continue living and thus root. So we'll see how that one fares. Uh, I'm interested to see how that works. Now our fourth ingredient is cinnamon. Regular powdered cinnamon. So what's the theory behind this one? Well, cinnamon doesn't actually contain any growth hormones. What it does contain is antifungal and antibacterial agents. So when you apply this to a fresh cut stem, what it does is it allows the natural auxin hormones. And so auxin hormones in plants um, are basically root and shoot stimulants that cause that plant to keep growing, to keep getting bigger, to keep pushing on. And so the cinnamon uh, basically provides a clean environment uh, and allows those auxins to be produced. So we'll see how this one goes. Um, possibly in a future video, I do want to test the combination of running cinnamon uh, sort of as an antifungal in combination with uh, a triacontinol agent like alfalfa or honey. And so you might be wondering why we have a fifth cup over here. 
Well, that is also going to be for a control. That is going to be for IBA, indrobutic acid. So this is an actual auxin uh, hormone. It is the industry standard uh, rooting powder. So this is what professional horticulturists uh, and plant biologists uh, and nurserymen use to root their cuttings. So we're going to use this guy and compare it against our home remedies. So the first thing we need to do is we need to label all of our cups. So we got honey. Okay, so we have all our cups labeled. Let's go ahead and put in equal amounts of the ingredients. Here we go. So we got all our cups filled. Um, you can see the tap water crystal clear. Then we get to the pond water, a little less clear. Then we got our indobutic acid. Get the cinnamon. Aspirin's in there somewhere. Alfalfa. Those guys will dissolve pretty quick. And then in this murky water here is the honey. Okay, so all that's left to do now is to get our rosemary cuttings and get them prepped to go in these cups. All right, quick demonstration. If you haven't already watched my previous video, uh, taking cuttings from your rosemary plants, I will show you what I do for a simple rosemary cutting. So here we got your typical cutting. Now this comes from an adult rosemary plant. It is a young green shoot. Um, they're usually about eight to 12 inches long and you didn't take it from a flowering stem. Okay, so you grab your fingers and you run it down the final, I'd say four inches like that and take all those leaves off. And then what you wanna do is you wanna scar that, scar that stem up because that's where the roots are gonna appear. Okay, that's it. Then we put it in one of our uh, containers and away we go. So I'm gonna do four cuttings per container just in case something goes wrong. You know, you always wanna back up. Um, I think if I do four cuttings per container, uh, we'll get adequate representation uh, for each of these um, hormone experiments. So we have seven buckets. That means I need to do uh, 28 uh, sprigs of rosemary. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so last one here. There is our pile of rosemary cuttings, which should be enough. So a couple things of why we're doing what we're doing. You need to take all of those leaves um, off of that stem. One, that's where the roots come out. Uh, but two, they will rot in the water and they'll rot that water so fast that it, it'll essentially kill the cutting. So this stem has to go into water you know, without these leaves going in. And then you noticed I was taking the scissors, you know, and scratching away that outer cambium. Well, that's to let more of the rooting agents, you know, into the plant tissues. Um, and it just provides a better rooting surface for those little nodules to start appearing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in all of our containers. 
four in each one. And then we wait. All right, guys, I got all the cuttings here tucked away neatly uh, in a shady spot of my greenhouse. We'll let these guys sit for a few weeks. Um, I'm going to check on them every week to make sure that the water levels are high enough and that it hasn't evaporated, drying out the stems. But there's nothing for us to do now but wait. All right, guys, I don't want to give it away, but some of these are already starting to get roots on them. Now that we have the tap water out of the way, we can look at our control, the pond water. I made the conscious decision to eliminate the worst stem out of each cup, leaving us with five stems for each hormone to analyze. After six weeks, the pond water did admirably with all five shoots being alive and three of them showing roots. Next up, we have the commercial rooting hormone, IBA or indobutric acid. Again, positive results as expected, but even better this time, with all five shoots showing roots. Now we have the cinnamon. Here, we had two dead stems, two living stems with no roots, and one stem that had sprouted roots. Next was the ground up aspirin. Much like the tap water, for whatever reason, we had a complete die off of all the stems. Waste of time. Alfalfa was the next test. Even though the water got pretty bad in this one, three of the stems stayed alive, with one of those stems actually sprouting roots. Now lastly, we have the honey. Only two stems made it out alive, but both stems actually showed signs of rooting. Very interesting experiment. As you guys can see, rosemary can sometimes be a little tricky to root from cuttings. I decided to score each hormone test on a three point scale, with actual sprouted roots being worth two points 
the stem still being alive, but with no roots, worth one point, and a stem die-off, worth zero points. Without further ado, here's the results. Well, that was certainly an interesting experiment using homemade rooting hormones. Seeing the results that I saw, or lack thereof, is certainly going to govern my strategy with rooting my cuttings going forward. I'm sure people have had success with these homemade hormone rooting strategies, but when I take my hardest plant to root on the farm, which is the rosemary, and I don't see any appreciable difference between any of the hormones and simple pond water, then I know going forward, for most of my plants and most of my cuttings, it's just simply unnecessary. If any of you guys have tried out these DIY hormones and you've had success or not had success, leave a comment down below. I'm super interested to see the results, you know, across a larger data set. Click subscribe if you haven't already. For those of you that have, I really do appreciate the support. And I'll see you in the next video.